Hi, Brian. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. I've got a really interesting gentleman and company to introduce you to today. I want to introduce you to Shloma Mervis. He is the chief executive officer and co-founder of uh, a fascinating, interesting company. We're going to chat about a little bit uh, today, and he's coming to me from Israel. Shloma, how are you? Welcome to the show. Excellent. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So I understand that you're an experienced business executive with a very demonstrated history of achievement in the research and technology industries. You have experience, uh, extensive experience in the intelligence sector from working as a senior vice president in Kila Intelligence Services. You're a strong entrepreneurship professional with an LLB law focused on public and international law. Sounds good? Excellent. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your, uh, your chronology and how did you come to where you are today? Sure. So as you mentioned, I'm originally a lawyer, which I was exposed to a lot of uh, things related to trust or maybe not, not trusting people. And I understood the importance of trust in our life. You'd probably say trust is one of the most basic elements of any relationship. Um, and it was really like appealing to me, how do we empower trust in the world? And later on, I became involved in the world of due diligence, especially with financial institutions. And I was thinking, how do we create a product that could really be efficient at the same time um, really serve the needs of the world of due diligence, um, mostly pre-investment background checks. So we're talking about the high level of uh, background checks. So we built a very unique product based on AI and machine learning to, to really provide that efficient uh, solution. And the company is called Intelligo? Intelligo Group, yes. And what does Intelligo do? So Intelligo provides a platform that you run um, background checks through a platform. Everything is independently. So you want to search um, by yourself. And we provide a, a wide comprehensive uh, solutions from basic background checks to comprehensive through monitoring, which in a way is the future of this industry. Um, and really you get back an interactive report with all the data you need to know, um, red flags, things you should notice, all the information you need to know in order to know if I can trust that person or not and move forward with the deal. About a company or about a person or both? Both. It's both about individuals and about companies. Um, so you see it as one project. You mostly look into company and the senior executives, and then you can get the full picture. And is this about uh, just uh, their reputation generally or about financial capability, credit checks? Tell me what, uh, what it encompasses. That's an excellent question. I mean, a lot of different background checks. We have the most comprehensive solution out there for uh, the most comprehensive automated solution. We basically cover everything that's available online um, from reputation, legal, financial, um, social media, everything out there that could possibly, possibly could be relevant, we provide in our reports. So, you know, often people will do credit checks on people and, uh, and, and go to credit bureaus and then try to get confirmation from different banking institutions as to what people's debts are. Uh, some of that, I would have thought, is not public and, and uh, it really takes a a credit bureau to get it. How do you get it? So first thing, um, for those kinds of checks, you need a consent of a person. Um, not always do we run a credit check as part of the search. Um, typically, it's actually not part of the search and not needed because mostly we can gather all the information that is relevant for red flags or general um, revel profile um, through the different uh, data available out there without doing a credit check. Um, so we actually prefer to avoid doing a credit check if needed. Um, it's obviously an option. It's obviously an option. Um, and if you do that option, you need the consent of the person to run that. Right. Okay. And, and you say the future is going to be monitoring. That's interesting. So, so a one-time check of someone is not good enough. You want to monitor them on an ongoing basis. For sure. I mean, a one-time check is only good for that certain point of time. Um, what happens if anything happens a moment after you did the background check? Um, so if you can know live what's happening, um, why would you do only a one-time check anymore? I mean, it's all about risk management. The ultimate risk management is always to know what's happening and to be the first one to know if there's any risks that you need to deal with. So it's interesting because, you know, I've had pitches recently on, uh, on Salesforce and, uh, and other customer relationship management softwares that allows you to establish a relationship people, uh, with a person and understand their reputation not for what you want to do, but to wish them a happy birthday and understand when they issue an article and uh, to try to promote a good relationship with them. You're almost doing the opposite where you uh, want to understand what they're all about to understand whether you actually want to do business with them. 
Look, it could be both. I'm not, I'm not avoiding the positive side. I mean, if you can monitor all the portfolio companies that you invested in and know what's happening with senior executives, if it's an article or about a publication or business deal, that's always there are a lot of benefits to a monitoring solution, both on the positive side, but also on the risk management side. Um, and it allows you to really, I mean, monitoring is, is challenging because if you look into solutions like Google Alerts, it's very noisy. Um, and there's too much noise, you really, you, you put it aside because it's not really sufficient and doesn't provide you real value. So we want to provide a tool that provides you real value, lifetime value, but doesn't bother you too much. At the same time, it allows you to, to manage risk in the ultimate way. When you say it's noisy, what do you mean it's noisy? It, 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 it's not no, actually noisy. I have Google alerts. They're not noisy. So it depends. depends. If you're a common name and appearing a lot of different stories, so let's say you're a well-known in your case, you are well known, but take any figure that there's hundreds of articles about them. And many times in the news, you have the same story appearing a lot of different sources. So Google Alert will show you 10, 10 different sources showing the same story. So with our product, it will automatically merge them to one event. Um, and then you can go through the different stories, but you don't have to waste your time going through 10 different stories to understand that it's one event that you're looking into. So you're making that monitoring process far easier and it's using AI to do so. Exactly. Fascinating. We're going to take a break and come back uh, in just two minutes with Shlomo Mervis, the Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder of Intelligo.ai. In just a minute, stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brand Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. As you know, I like checking out interesting companies around the world, uh, particularly technology companies or, or med tech companies that are really on the cutting edge. And I came across one called Intelligo.ai that is, uh, is, is really with AI and, uh, and advanced um, you know, database searching, able to do a far better, you know, really a reference check on, uh, on people and, and try to figure out whether the people that you're doing business with are trustworthy. And my guest is Shlomo Mervis. He's coming to us from Israel. He's the chief executive officer and co-founder of Intelligo. Um, whereabouts in Italy are you uh, calling into us from, Shlomo? I no, call Israel. Chief Israel. From Israel, exactly. Um, next to Jerusalem, and our offices are in Tel Aviv. How far is uh, Tel Aviv from Jerusalem? Um, without traffic, it's an hour drive. Excellent. And uh, how long have you been uh, been uh, located in uh, in Israel? I was born in Israel. So, Great place to do business. It's got quite a technology startup uh, a sector. Amazing. I'm a huge fan of Israel um, and a flourishing startup community. Um, Tel Aviv is the number two um, city in the world after Silicon Valley with the amount of startups per capita. Uh, so it's definitely a flourishing uh, startup nation, I would say. Um, I've read the book, Startup Nation. Uh, I presume you have. It's an excellent uh, review of, of some of the secrets to success. Right. Completely. Now, you must obviously believe some of the secrets to success in business is trust. And you wrote to me that uh, trust is an essential component of any professional relationship, from the people we hire to the investment decisions we make. But trust must rest on a foundation of knowledge. And that's why we founded Intelligo, to increase transparency in business and to democratize trust. What do you mean about democratize trust? I mean... By the way, it's not only a basis of a business relationship, it's a basis of any relationship, if it's personal or business. Um, now, when we know each other, so there's intuition and I know you, so there's a lot of things I can take under consideration. The challenge in this world that we meet a lot of people, especially in business, that we don't know each other, don't, we don't have many mutual friends. Um, even if we have mutual friends, we don't know how, how well do they know them. And we need some kind of a tool to, to enable us to know, can we really trust you? In this world today, it's really easy to create, I would say, a false reputation of this very successful business person. We know from Madoff to many other people um, that create certain reputations that if somebody would dive into them, we would know that there are a lot of red flags around it. And so you're trying to get those red flags out more promptly. Yes, we want to provide you a simple tool, an efficient one, that in a very simple way, just run a check and will immediately raise you red flags. So things you should be aware of, or even if the yellow flags, um, something that is worthwhile noticing, is something for you to consider before you're doing business with. Right. We're also joined by Mark 
Bowerkowski. He is the president and chief executive officer of Mercantile Mergers and Acquisitions. It's a company here in Toronto that specializes in uh, mid-market due diligence and uh, M&A. Uh, Mark, why do you think that this is such an important uh, uh, issue? Brian, thank you uh, for having me on the show and sorry about the, the, sorry about the sound problems. Why is Intellego important? Well, let me tell you. You and I have dealt with all kinds of large organizations, small organizations internationally. We don't know these people. Uh, we don't know these organizations. We don't have a lot of data beyond what we can find on the internet. Today's Globe and Mail, June 16, the headline front page says, Federal Anti-Money Laundering Agency of Failure, inquiry reads. There, okay, billions of dollars are being poured into Canada. Okay, good money coming into Canada, but with bad money comes bad people. So as we search these references through the database, international databases, many databases that Intellego uh, are able to search, we can find people who forget them being involved with prostitution, gambling, drugs, uh, stock manipulation gangsters mafia call them whatever you want they make their proceeds by not paying bills so if we're dealing with investors who are coming to buy a canadian company of any substance and they look legitimate on the surface a lot of these groups make their 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 big dollars by simply not paying and not keeping their word so all through these databases we can find all kinds of credit information we can find references that we won't find through the traditional databases. Why is Intellego valuable? Why is it important? For those reasons, we need to know who we're dealing with. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate it. Shlomo, you know, Francis Fukuyama, one of the top historians and political scientists, wrote a book about trust. Tell me a little bit about more about trust and why it's so important. At the end of the day, um, we, we can create, I mean, Impressions when we meet with somebody, we make a judgment based on things that are not necessarily the things that we should judge. Like we know when we're looking to hire somebody, we made a decision after two seconds that this is a person we want to hire based on looks, expressions, whatever that is. Um, and the many ways, if you're a very charismatic person, um, the many ways to create that, um, I would say people that would appreciate you for things that are not necessarily should be appreciated for. Um, now, charisma is a great thing. Um, it has to be on top of something that is the most basic component is, are you a reliable person? Are you, can you stand behind the things you say? Um, and those are very crucial elements because if you're not a reliable person, anything you present to me about your business, about um, your team or anything, I have to take in a certain perspective, how much can I trust that or not? And these are things that are crucial that really have a big impact on both on a relationship and on the ability for a business to succeed. You know, Francis Fukuyama, um, I, I'm not going to get the, uh, the analogy completely right, but he said that uh, charisma and, uh, and relationships and uh, confidence were the, the grease of, uh, of close personal relationships uh, in business, but that trust was the glue. Does that make any sense to you? Completely. And it's amazing to have charisma and relationships is a very core aspect of doing business. And allows to do it to allows cooperation, allows being in touch and creating that personal connection, but really without the most basic element of trust, which you describe as glue, which I think it's a great metaphor. So I think that's a great way to describe it. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Intelligo, because um, I understand that uh, drawing on your experience in due diligence and research and seeing the weakness in some traditional methods, you've set out to create a better background intelligence solution by leveraging the power of AI and big data. As a result, uh, your company, Intelligo, makes businesses less susceptible to risk by finding uh, those most accurate, timely, and actionable intelligence about companies and individuals that we've been speaking about. Tell me a little bit about how you utilize AI and big data in this process, please. For sure. So just to, do, to understand why this really provides value. First thing, it provides speed. Um, and when you make a business decision, time is always against you. So if there's an opportunity, you want to move forward fast. The ability to get a background check report very fast is very important. What really allows most important thing in, in risk management is data. To get accurate information and most amounts of data, 
to enable you to make the, the most um, qualified decision. Um, the uniqueness of an automated tool based on AI and machine learning is one, the ability to gather a huge amount of data, uh, much more than anybody else, because there's no really cost of time of reviewing the data. Second is the component of an analyst. When you go to any consultant out there, you have to be lucky because are you getting a junior analyst or a consultant or a senior one? And even if it's a senior and a very experienced um, consultant to work for you, is it the right day for him to work for you in the sense that he sleep well at night? Is he concentrated and everything? Um, when you have a tool like ours, which is based on AI machine, machine learning, it simulates the process of thinking of an analyst, coming up with the same conclusion as an analyst, and the advantage of a machine learning system, you're working with the most um, experienced senior consultant out there because he knows to think about any possible thing out there that he should take into consideration. So first thing, you're working with the most experienced uh, person out there in the block. And second, he's always very focused and very methodological, so he doesn't miss out anything. Um, and that's the advantage. So you get white coverage and you never miss out. The, 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 the potential to miss out something is very low compared to any other analyst out there. So that's the that's a real advantage of such a product. Mark Barakowski, I wonder if you could tell me, um, you know, what uh, what Shlomo is saying is that uh, timeliness of data is so critically important. You've talked to me uh, previously about due diligence, and uh, and all the data and all the information you got to find. But I guess, you know, it, it, it's interesting that uh, the timeliness of this data is so critically important. Tell us about it, Brian. We do deals in real time. I mean. Um, we, 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 we discuss a prospect with, a, with, a, with a, a potential buyer or investor. We have 30 days in order to make a deal. It doesn't give us a sufficient amount of time to study our prospect and understand whether they have the wherewithal. Many of them will say subject to financing. Why is it timely? Within 30 days, we either have a deal or we don't have a deal. And if we struck the wrong deal, it costs us all dearly. Time, time, time. There was this uh, great book, uh, I think it was called Flash Boys, that uh, talked about how uh, just a, you know, a, a portion of a second faster information uh, of the stock market uh, aided them uh, substantially in, uh, in their uh, trading. Uh, so I guess uh, your, uh, your service uh, does well. Uh, Shlomo, this is an international business? Yes, focus mostly on the U.S., um, clients in the U.S., um, but operating globally. And if I wanted to uh, access it, uh, how would I do so? Go to a website? Yeah, Intelligo.ai, very simply. Um, you can do a self-onboarding and, and immediately start working as a client. It's very simple. Fantastic. Um, so, you know, I do uh, uh, lots of, uh, of, of business in the real estate uh, market and, uh, and the venture capital market. Um, so what would you suggest that I do? I, I would uh, log into your site and I would give you the names of the chief executive and the the chief financial officer and uh, and uh, and the company name and and how much would that cost me to get you to do a little bit of research on them? For sure. So it really depends on the volume of work you do and and also what kind because we provide a range of different services. As I said, from basic background checks to very comprehensive. Is also there. We built the system to be a tailor made solution to your needs. So if you're investing in real estate, that's one thing, and you have different consents. And if you're investing in venture capital, that's another thing. Or if you're if you're a funder, funder, and allocator, um, there are different points of focus. So we really have an ability to tailor made um, our abilities to your exactly need to make it cost effective. So the pricing range is between I would say two hundred dollars on the low side to fourteen hundred dollars on the high on the high end, um, and it really depends on the exact need. Um, if you're a high volume um, user. Um, you'll be contacted by a Canon executive and we'll take you through the system um, and we can provide you the best service to make sure you're using the platform in the most in the best way. So that's what I would recommend. What about uh, for recruiting? Recruiting is a big thing. It's not been in our focus until now and that's our next big thing. Um, so in the world of, of recruiting, it really depends. You have recruiting of like the gig economy which you have a lot of different providers out there providing services for Czech or Walmart or any other large institution in the gig economy. Um, but in the world of um, executive recruiting on the world of professional services, like lawyers, consultants, accountants, or technology companies, they spend much more on the element of risk management and, and background checks before hiring. 
um, and we think our solution is the ultimate solution for them. Um, and we're coming to replace a solution which today is completely manual. So that's our next big thing, and we exactly launched it now. So excellent question. The timing is great. Has, um, has this process changed because of COVID-19? It changed a lot, not because the process changed, because the reality changed in a sense that if you had like operational due diligence team that typically used to sit in one place in an office, and when COVID they went home, and then people started to gather out um, towards other um, cities or country or states around the US. So suddenly you have operational due diligence team or an HR team or compliance team um, sitting in a lot of different locations, um, and they have to manage this, possible, this process together in an efficient way. And, there, and in that place, uh, having a platform that allows you as a person managing that team to have full transparency where things are standing, who is running what at any point, and the ability to run a report at any time from any place. We saw people running a report on midnight from their house, which is nice. It allows you to be very productive and efficient. Um, so it really, it really answers the need spe specifically on for COVID break, broke out. I would think this would be potentially really helpful with online dating as well. Yeah, um, I have a funny story that uh, I got a phone call uh, from one of the online dating uh, platforms, one of the most famous ones. Um, I got a phone call from the CEO of Tinder and was really interested in this product. Um, sure, the problem is that the difference, it always has to be a cost-effective product. And obviously in dating, um, I think trust is a crucial element of building a trust, uh, of building a relationship. Um, our product is right now a bit more than they need, I would say, is in a cost-effective way. So it will demand adoption, but definitely interesting direction to go to. You're going to have to get uh, your volume up dramatically before you can uh, cost-effectively uh, service that sector, I guess. Yeah, it's a completely different world. It's a B2C and not a B2B um, with the different expectations, but very interesting. Well, we're having a fascinating conversation uh, tonight with... Uh, uh, Shlomo Mervis, he is the chief executive officer and co-founder of a company by the name of Intelligo.ai, which is a company that um, really, with, big, with big data and AI, analyzes people's relationships, people's backgrounds, does reference checks on them, and gives you a sense about whether these business people that you're thinking about doing business with are trustworthy. Fascinating. We're going to take a break uh, for some messages and back more, be more with uh, Shlomo in just two minutes. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back, everybody, again, to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. We're chatting tonight with Shlomo Mervis. He is the chief executive officer and co-founder of uh, a company by the name of Intelligo.ai, which is a company that specializes in doing background checks on people, uh, but does it online with big data and AI. Um, and, um, and really, you know, trying to make sure that the people that you're going to be doing business with are trustworthy. Uh, and uh, Shlomo is coming to us uh, from uh, just outside of Jerusalem, where he's located uh, in uh, Israel right now. Uh, his office is in Tel Aviv. Uh, maybe we could sort of elevate just for a second, Shlomo. Um, you know, the book Startup Nation really described um, an incredible dynamic environment in Israel for starting up companies. And I guess one of the things that I found interesting is it suggested a lot of the people started up businesses with people that they met in the Israeli army um, and that, that the universities, the government uh, played uh, a big role, um, that uh, there were, was a lot of cross-investing and, uh, and almost sort of cross-fertilization of, uh, of, of businesses. And I'd love it if you could tell me a little bit about that, but I think that you know, some of that uh, has also occurred in Manhattan and Silicon Valley, et cetera. So it's almost like, you know, these dynamic ecosystems, um, if you can, can achieve them, um, really are catalysts to far more technological development, uh, the creation of companies, employment, uh, intellectual property, et cetera. Uh, do you agree with all that? Tell me a little bit about your experience, if you could. I do agree, but I would add what I think is the real um, unique um, culture of work in Israel that maybe is contributing to the success. <clears throat> Um, so obviously, um, communities have a big impact um, and allows people on a basic level, you get the opportunity to meet a person and his capabilities. If you serve together in the different intelligence units or if you're together in university in, in Silicon Valley, whatever that is, and you get to know a person and naturally, there's obviously if there's chemistry or not, and, and you feel that person is something that you both appreciate and you can work with. 
And that's right in every community where you are across the world. Something I think is very interesting in the Israeli culture um, is that we very we have a culture that we we really in favor of testing and failing, meaning there's nothing, there's no shame to fail. There's a shame to fail twice, but shame, failing once is something that you can't without it. And, and we're really in favor on that. And I always encourage my employees, test, try, and worst case, and worst case you fail, and that just change and improve. But it allows us to be very dynamic and allows us to take larger risks because there's no embarrassment about um, failing. It's actually something we encourage. Um, but it really allows us to move forward fast in the sense that, especially in the world of, of high tech and startups, you can't without that testing element. That's why you start with an MVP, a minimal viable product. And then uh, you, you try, you check out the markets, you make assumptions and you check them out. You possibly fail with some of them, but then you move forward with the others. And I think that's a crucial element of the success of Israeli startups. I guess one of the comments that, uh, that I've heard is fail fast. And it's almost as if you want to, yes, you're going to accept <clears throat> it. You're probably going to have some failures, but you want to do it before you invest too much time and money. Exactly. Um, so that's why that the whole concept of Peter Thiel of um, MVP is really allowing you to, to fa also fail on not, not a too larger scale that you put too much work and effort into a product, but in an early stage of the development, and then also break down the different product developments into micro stages, and each one of them you test out, you see how the client reacts to it, and then you, and then you build up. Um, and I think that's also very important just to be cost effective. But I guess where I was uh, driving, and maybe this isn't the case, but is that um, you know if if there's a lot more VC and uh, uh, venture capital and private equity investment in different companies, um, where people are constantly looking for those investment opportunities and cross fertilizing and and uh, and and cross investing, etc., your service of uh, checking people out um, becomes more important uh, than if you know you're making one investment and you're buying a majority interest and you're sticking with it for the next 10 or 20 years, which is, I think, the way investment would have been done sort of a generation ago. Has the way that people invested in venture capital and private equity changed, do you think? And has that made there be more need for your service? I think that's going to, I'm not sure it changed a lot. The volume changed a lot. We also, 2021, um, that the, the, the peak of volume was unbelievable. Um, and obviously now the markets are going down, but also creates more opportunities and then more deals to come after that because there's still a lot of money in the market. But for each one of those segments, there's a different need and each one of them is a great need. So VCs, at the end of the day, they always say we invest in people. So you really want to invest in the management. Um, and therefore, really knowing who that management is, is crucial. So background check is crucial for that part. In private equity, getting involved in a business for many years. So you want to make sure you know everything about that business before you have this long-term relationship with that business. Um, and if you're an allocator and investing in different funds, um, you're also investing along the reputation of that person and how on his ability to execute. So it really answers those different needs. And today in the market today, especially with deal volume going up, at the same time, um, the, bio, um, the, the market is, could change to any direction, and you have to be much more careful about your investments. I think the need for a background check only increases in, the, in, points like, in times like this. Um, so I think it will only increase with time. And add to that, the amount of data out there constantly increases. So my ability to know a lot of value only increases with time um, with things going out. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Mark, um, you know, I think that uh, really the same question that uh, because of this uh, increase in the volume in the venture capital and private equity market, volume would be up. I'm wondering from your vantage point, you know, has, has due diligence and, and what you do changed and, and is it more important today than it may have been in the past? Ryan, let me comment about the venture capital and private equity industry at the moment. The market statistics prove it. All the, all, all the information being reported, it's steaming hot. With all the reports, it indicates that the market is growing and it's continued to grow. There are many, many transactions that are not reported. There's all kinds of organizations that are declaring themselves as private equity organizations investing in Canadian and international companies. Let's talk about due diligence. Due diligence, due diligence has been done 100 million times the same way. We can go through all the financial analysis. We can go through company analysis. What we can't get to are the prospective investors who are coming forward. That is where the lacking areas. So 
we, we constantly look for better data, more information. The information presented to us can be analyzed in countless ways. What we don't know are the parties on the other side of the table. And that's where my colleague Shlomo and his team are able to provide us better information. Fascinating. Shlomo, AI, how does AI help you? I understand how the big data helps you. How does AI help you? The component of simulating the process of thinking of an analyst is the AI component, meaning the ability to know if I can match two points of data, if I can make a conclusion about connecting a point of data. The, the, those are very um, complex um, parts of the tool, um, which the AI is very crucial in order to allow um, a sufficient decision-making process. And obviously, machine learning is not less important. The ability to constantly learn from feedback and from results also improves the results. Um, I would say it's the combination of both. The stock market uh, is down and the tech stock market, the NASDAQ is down like 35% or something like that since its height in the December. How does that impact you? First thing it, impact, it impacts directly um, our client base because the more deals done, the more due diligence done, the less deals done, the less due diligence reports done. So that affects us. Um, but obviously, again, a huge amount, maybe probably a record amount of capital was raised um, by funds in 2021. So there's a lot of capital to be deployed. Um, my sense is that right now the investors are waiting on the fence to see where the market is going to decide their strategy of investment. Um, so I think the market is going to go back on the level of activity very, like we'll go to a high level of activity very soon. Once we know how bad this is going to go, what direction this is going to go. So on the long term, I don't think it affects too much, probably only increases the need for background checks and due diligence because of the changes in the market and the risk um, associated with it. Really, that's fascinating. So what you're saying is actually the market decline is potentially very beneficial to you because uh, you've got so much money uh, looking for deals and those deals are going to be cheaper in the next little while, are already cheaper and are going to be even cheaper in the next little while, which is going to um, create even more demand for your services. Sure. Um, right now, the investors are on the strong side. 2021, the entrepreneurs were the strong in the relationship. Um, and that creates a lot of opportunities for investors and the combination of having a lot of capital. Um, and on the other side, a lot of companies needing capital will probably only increase deal volume um, on the long term. Mark, what about you? Do you think that this uh, market decline is going to impact due diligence and deals done in the tech space? Ryan, there is no decline in technology activity, certainly in Canada. There's a decline in stock prices of these very overvalued organizations like Apple and IBM. They're coming back to a level of re reality. In Toronto alone, there are 68 new technology companies that are coming into the market. Google is taking over eight or nine floors of a major office tower in Toronto. Snowflake announced that they're coming to Toronto. Technology is not declining. We're exploding and expanding. So the reality is um, maybe stock prices are dropping, but technology ever increasing. So it's good news. It's good news. Job opportunities at the moment are wanting. We can't find good people. So again, getting down to people, we have to screen people, determine whether they're the right fit and they do come with the appropriate background. People lie on their resumes. People rely on their resumes or people lie on their resumes? Shlomo, do people actually lie on their resumes? Lie um, is, is a harsh word, um, but they're less accurate about things. That's accurate, um, okay. But it's very common to see somebody saying that he has a degree from a certain university when in reality only studied there like for two years. So there are a lot of inaccuracies that many times reflect a lot about the personality of that person. Um, very strong lies is less common, but a lot of inaccuracies that definitely give an indication about something. You know, yesterday there was an announcement about a, a big uh, airline company whose chief executive officer um, was removed um, for, I don't know, I think it said for reasons against the corporate uh, philosophy or policies or something like that. And there was no additional information. Um, how does your service, how can you possibly um, protect someone from something like that, that not even the company is announcing what exactly the, the issue was? 
So look, there, there is a limit to what we can know. Obviously, it's, a, it's all based on, on open source public data, um, but many things could be indication for certain things happening, if it's financial stress or other things that could always provide indication if it's external, and therefore you should give more attention to them. Um, so again, I, I don't want to create expectations that you can know everything out there, and there's different limit there's obviously limitations both to a manual service provider and to a technology company. Um, but if you look out there and with the data you have out there, probably the ultimate, you'll get the most out of the ability to really cover a large amount of data, which increases the chances of identifying something. Remind us if uh, we want to check out your services, uh, how do we do that? So just, uh, just Google Intelligo Group or Intelligo.ai, um, and very simply, you'll just log in and, and register, and you can start using the product. And uh, Intelligo is I-N-T-E-L-L-I-G-O, Intelligo, Intelligo.ai. Which in Latin is I know. Oh, really? That's interesting. I know. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, we're chatting tonight with Shlomo Mervis. He is the chief executive officer and co-founder of Intelligo. We're going to take a final break for some messages and come back with some concluding comments in just a minute. Stay with us, everybody. Stephanie. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 60. I've had uh, an interesting time talking tonight with Shlomo Mervis. He is the chief executive officer and co-founder of a company out of Israel called Intelligo.ai, Intelligo. Uh, actually in Latin means I know. And I think that's a completely appropriate uh, translation uh, for into the title of his, uh, of his company's name um, because what he's doing is using big data and AI such that, uh, that he knows all about us or all about the, uh, the employees we want to hire or the companies we want to do business with. Um, we've had a good conversation about trust and how trust is, uh, is important uh, in a professional relationship and frankly in, in all relationships and how he through his uh, services, um, ensures that uh, we're doing business with people we can trust. Um, Shalom, I'm wondering what you think the future of background checks uh, is going to be in the future? Um, I think that's one of the most interesting questions. First thing, I think it's a matter of time that all background check solutions will be automated solutions um, or a combination of automated with, uh, with the hybrid of analysts involved. Um, so that's important to recognize. But really, if you look into trends, which are important trends like privacy and, and people owning their own data and everything, uh, my belief that the future is actually blockchain and wallets um, of you owning your own data. Um, so I think the combination of the ability to do monitoring and to know live what's happening in the same time of people owning their own data and deciding who they, they control their process but who to share the information with <clears throat> really serves the need of both transparency um, when needed um, allows to really people manage risk in a real way, in a best way, um, and also allows people to control the data, which I think is also very important. Um, something I really strive to, to reach also with our products. You know, in uh, the VC business, the venture capital business, historically, um, you know, there was this uh, line that said that, uh, you know, you had to have all your investments within a half hour drive, half day drive uh, of where you were. And so the Silicon Valley people only invested in Silicon Valley. It seems like you think um, that uh, VC and PE, uh, venture capital and private equity invested is almost global. And, uh, and because of that, it's more challenging to get to know people uh, and therefore your services are more important. What do you think? Is, is, is venture capital and private equity investing? Um, and, and frankly, you, you provide your services to major companies as well, I presume. So major company investing. Is it a local network ecosystem um, uh, business? or has it become more global? <clears throat> so first thing, it's important to mention that most of the diligence activity and investments are done in North America. So I'd say at least 50% of the global activity. Um, but for sure, in the same time, there's a significant increase of global activity um, with the ability to make things very simple, simple um, with having a conversation through Zoom and COVID really um, forcing us to adapt to this new reality. Um, and a lot of opportunities out there, and we see increase of deal activity in India and in Africa and many other countries, um, especially developing countries where the amount of opportunities is huge. Um, so in these places, uh, the need for due diligence background check even increases compared to other places where some things you can do by yourself and some things you need external service to do so. Um, so it's definitely an increase of need in that, in that situation. Mark Barakowski, uh, President and Chief Executive Officer of Mercantile 
mergers and acquisitions. What do you think? Has VC and private equity investing gone from being a local business to now being a global business? What do you think? Mark, are you there still? Brian, private equity is global. Private equity is, is in Canada, the United States. There's a conference ongoing at the moment. There are 1,100 people attending small conferences, investing worldwide. Private equity is the new driving force in the economies, venture capital as well. So it is a hot market. It will continue to be lots of pent up demand lots of institutional capital, substantial private capital. All of this, this money needs to be invested. It's not going into real estate. It's going into all kinds of new ventures and it making all kinds of acquisitions as well. Lots of money, unfortunately, not a lot of good projects to invest in. But because of that, I guess, uh, Shlomo, your business is even more important. Exactly. Remind us, uh, please, uh, if people want to access your services, how do they do that? Very simple. Just maybe Google Intelligo Group or go to Intelligo.ai, I-N-T-E-L-L-I-G-O. Um, and you can just log on through our, our um, website and you can log on into our system in a very simple way and start a search. We put a lot of effort and simplicity. Maybe I can, uh, you know, number one, thank you for uh, joining us, but then also add my, uh, my uh, conclusion here. I do think, uh, and, and some of uh, our listeners um, you're aware that I've been doing my, uh, my doctorate in business and I've been focusing on social capital. And, uh, and as I mentioned, Francis Fukuyama, you know, one of the um, sort of preeminent uh, political scientists and sociologists uh, wrote a book on trust and, uh, and how trust is so critically important. Um, and this idea that, uh, that it is the glue of relationships uh, and when broken ends up being a, a huge problem and issue. And, and, you know, lots of people have, have uh, have read the sort of the meme about uh, that uh, you know trust takes a long time to to build but uh, can be gone in 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 no time flat, and so I do think that there's there's a lot to say about uh, what Shlomo is uh, talking. I do think that uh, close personal relationships and networks and uh, getting out there and meeting people, um, uh, such that uh, not just through big data and AI can you do a reference check, but that people can speak highly of you and say you're a good guy or, or a, a great gal uh, is so critically important because I used to work for a guy by the name of Jimmy Patterson, the uh, multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire. Um, and he used to say in the end, Brian, people do business with people. And, uh, and so, you know, products are important, companies are important, but, but in the end, it's the people that you're going to be doing business with that's so critically important. And trust is, is an important, if not the most important um, quality in that. So I think, uh, you know, Number one, protect your reputation. Uh, and number two, uh, maybe access Shlomo's uh, uh, services to check out the people that you're going to be doing business with. That's our show for tonight. Shlomo, thanks so much for joining us uh, from uh, Israel. Mark uh, uh, Borkowski, thank you so much for joining us from Toronto. And um, we're going to have to check out IntelliGo.ai uh, 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 to check you out. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Good night, everybody. I remind you I'm on every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 AM. You can stream me online. Shlomo, from anywhere in the world, even from Israel, at uh, what's that's going to be? That's going to be uh, like 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, your time, 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, your time. Uh, and you can stream me online at www.saga960am.ca. You can get all my podcasts and video casts on briancrombie.com. My videos are posted on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, and YouTube and my uh, podcasts are on Apple, Audible and Speakeasy Podcast. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody.